Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Chris and Sari, and we're going to be talking about how they went from buying turnkey rental properties to then switching to doing purpose-built rentals from a builder's perspective. I'm so excited that they're here to share their knowledge with us. Before we get into it with Chris and Sari, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. Uh, feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, Let's get into it. Chris, sorry, so glad you guys have been able to take some time out of your crazy busy schedule right now to join us and talk all about um, purpose-built rentals. I know you have a ton of experience in this space. Before we get into that, give us a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as real estate investors. Yeah, so uh, obviously Chris and Sari, we're out of uh, Victoria, BC. Um, we basically have a transition over the last couple of years from our previous careers. Sari was a director of social services. Uh, I was 22 years in the Navy. Uh, we both left our previous careers. Um, myself, I'm now becoming a general contractor to do our, our builds and uh, property management. I took my property management license as well. And Sari is a realtor out here in Victoria, um, specializing in the local area and uh, rental properties. And yeah, she's doing really well. Explain to people the difference between stick built, modular, and prefab. Yeah, so obviously everyone understands stick build. Um, your <clears throat> your studs and everything comes on pallets, and they build it on site. Um, modular, they'll come up in their you know boxes, so each room will be put together, or your standard mod modular home. Um, our prefab is basically it's a it's more of a prepackaged home. Um, they prefabricate the walls in in their warehouse, so it's all. It built inside in nine foot sections. So you'll have your nine foot section wall with your window cut out and everything done. So basically a stick build on their site. And so mm -hmm. they're in um, like a, how would you say it? Like an environment proof, um, oh, climate proof, proof spot. Yeah. So um, all your woods getting cured at the time. Cause you know how people worry about that sometimes like, well, is it wet wood, is it dry wood? So they have that time they're in that climatized spot and they're doing the stick build off site on somewhere that's protected. Yep. So our, the walls all show up in nine foot sections, um, and literally they come off the tr off the crane. And it depends how your setup is, but for us, we take them off the crane. The walls go right on onto the the floor, and as the as the trucks off loading, the framers are putting the walls up. So our first floor walls were up by noon, uh, the first day. <laughs> right. I've built a house from the ground up. Um, definitely not that fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> without a crew. Um, yeah. And, and so explain to me how, uh, cause you know, I'm just envisioning like the wall assembly is great. That, that, that makes sense to me. You could have an insulated wall with the windows cut out, but how do the systems go into that? Is there then framing as associated with where your plumbing and electrical goes? Cause you can't obviously prefab that or can you? Well, so the, the homes we use, uh, don't have the insulation there. There is that, um, that option out there. It's called smart walls. They'll come with the mm. insulation as well. Ours are just studded walls with the uh, plywood on the outside, so all sheeted. So sheeted, studded, studded walls. Um, so they go up, um, and all the other material you need to lock up comes as well. So all your siding, your door, your exterior doors and windows, the roofing material, um, shingles, everything shows up, um, rain screen. Um, it's all there waiting for you. So again, depending on your truck schedule you ask for, um, but it'll all be on site. Um, so you're not waiting for material your trades can jump on uh, as soon as they're ready and move to the next stage, um, which is, is very key. Um, as for plumbing, it's it just, once once the house is up at lockup stage, it's the same as any other build, same as stick build. You have to go cut your holes for your electrical and plumbing. They get it to lockup stage as a prefabricated unit. And then it's a, it's a pretty much a standard build from that moment forward. Yeah. And if you, uh, when we bring our inspectors in and engineers, they look at, they can't tell it's prefabricated house. Yeah. It, there's nothing different um from our house to a regular stick build with the exception of the walls are built somewhere else and brought on site and they didn't have to weather the storm yeah especially on the island um <laughs> during yeah. that build period <laughs> yeah and that's that's yeah. the other key benefit is that we're at lockup and weather tight in nine days right wow. so you're not worrying about the rain um uh, coming in and and uh, messing with your floors and that kind of stuff so it's 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 really key that way um one of the other big uh, benefits is the cost control Prefab is a bit more expensive. Um, I'm, I, when I run the numbers, it's about 20% um, uh, more of, in cost um, to do it. And that's just material wise, but you bring your, you know, your framer cost, obviously that, that's a lot lower. Um, I'm saving about $10,000 on my framer for each build, right? So that brings it down. 
um, as well as the waste management, like, because everything's built off site, we're not paying for that big pile of scrap lumber um, or off cuts and, you know, wasted, basically we don't pay for the waste. Um, so that's a huge one. But the big thing for cost control is when you sign your contract six months in advance, you have the price at that point. So say your price for materials is $100,000. Well, when you're building a house in six months, you're still paying $100,000. So the, today is the perfect example. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say this, uh, this is an example of uh, yeah. where that would be hugely beneficial. You could double the price of a build right now, I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, we just did two yeah. builds. So the builds we just did, um, and just for, so the 2,400 square foot houses, um, plus garage, plus double garage, uh, three bedroom up plus den, and then a two bedroom suite. So the material to get to lockup we paid was about $93,000. That's shipped, GST, everything, uh, tax included, 93,000. Um, today, um, if we would have bought that one today, we'd be built 150. Right. That's, that's so, a huge increase. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously the prefab prices have gone up with COVID just because yeah. material costs go up, but we yeah. signed that package in January. So we had generous prices. In August, or sorry, July, end of July, it arrived. Chris, Sari, where um, are you guys working together on this as a business? Um, so who's responsible for what in, in your, in your uh, business, the way you do things? I am the dreamer of the team. <laughs> I, so I have, uh, you know, dreams all over the place. I'm always looking at lots. Um, I can see a deal from, you know, from here out to two years from now. I know what's coming up. Um, it's actually quite interesting. So the lots that we just finished building on, um, we purchased those a year and a half ago. Um, I locked it down. We said that we'd close on it um, in the new year. Uh, but the price was amazing. So we got it for just around um, 300 for both the lots, uh, which is a great price. Uh, you can't go wrong with that at all. But I just knew that there wasn't that many around and there was like a special situation for why it was that cheap. Um, so anyway, I'm just one of those. I'm always looking out for the next deal and uh, seeing who can do a VTB and uh, who's interested in what. So uh, just sort of sift through that and then present stuff to Chris all the time. <laughs> yeah, so she's a dreamer. I'm the one who has to make it happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, um, I am a, a new general contractor just working on getting that or finishing my license right now. Um, so my job is obviously to take her dream and make it reality. Um, so, and right now I'm very hands-on. So my first build I did, which the, the picture I showed you, I did everything after drywall. So all the flooring, all the tile, all, you know, all the trim, everything like that, um, install the kitchens. The tar. Yeah. He like did yeah. all the grip work. <laughs> yeah. The finishes are the finishes are beautiful. You did a you did a great job. Yeah, you asked who does what. Sarah's the designer, so that's all okay. Yeah. yeah. You need you need a good designer, and you need a good um, somebody who can follow through on the vision. And it, that, yeah, that was a fun one. That was our first build, and like I said, it was on our acreage, so it was hard to let that one go. Um, as mm. we were building it, like it was, I was on it for six months. That was a, uh, a six month project for us, that one. Um, we took, it took our time, like me and my, my father-in-law did all the electrical and plumbing um, together and cause he's a retired electrician plumber. And, you know, I uh, laid the, helped lay the concrete, did the uh, crawl space slab myself. And yeah, so it was a, it was a labor of love that one. Um, Absolutely. The next ones we've done, um, they're the purpose-built rentals and I'm starting to pull out slowly on the, uh, the hands-on. Um, become more of a standard general contractor but you know I'm still I put the kitchens in and that kind of stuff so it, it's still fun but now yeah we're our, for our next big projects we have coming up um, we get over 53 homes in the next five years um, 44 single family and then nine townhomes we're doing over the next five years that we've signed up for um, and we're going to use the prefab model mm -hmm. um, and we're going to move forward with that um, but obviously I'll be more of a your standard general contractor for those ones. Yeah, good luck uh, putting in 44 kitchens on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> You'll try, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. but, that's but uh, that's now, amazing. So let's go back to the, the purpose-built rentals. Ha yeah. Have they been different in a way? Like, are they multi-unit or are they just purpose-built for the purpose of actually renting them out? Yep. Yeah, so we, we've we created uh, two suites in each house. So we have mm -hmm. two houses side by side. Each but one has a... The oh. funny thing is, just to put, a, put it in here... Um, is we, one of the joint venture partner purchases that we did, that we have a suited house, we just love the design. Like there's no complaints. It's just like, it's just beautiful. Like it's, it was exactly what we wanted. So we actually took that design. 
we went to our municipality. We said, hey, we like this house. How does it fit on this piece of property that we have? Actually, both of them. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, oh, well, you know, he helped us out with the measurements of how it could fit on the lot. And then we took that. And then we went to Winton, um, the guys we use for a prefab. And then mm -hmm. said, hey, this is our design. Can you do this? And they said, absolutely. So um, they just sort of put it in their computer and do whatever magic they do. And they said, yeah, this is how we can do it. And um, that's how we started. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that, you know, reverse engineering it, right? I mean, kind of like go to the city, figure out what they want, then go yeah. to the designer and then, you know, actually executing on that. I imagine gets relatively easy as opposed to the other way around. You come up with the vision and then you go to the designer and the designer says that doesn't work. And then you go to the city and they say, it's awful. I like yeah. to reverse engineer that to get exactly what the city wants and exactly what you want. Yeah. And our, so the purposeful rentals we did are the three bedroom plus den um, on the upper, well, the main level and up level uh, with a two bedroom suite downstairs. Um, we completely separate them. Uh, so there's no interior doors joining them, uh, their own meter, their own hot water tank. Um, so like I said, that's what, in my mind, makes a purposeful rental is you're separating them and make it the best for you as a property manager because you'll get less complaints, but also the best for the tenants, right? Their own hot water tank, no electrical meter. That's that's key, I think. Yeah, I did a purpose built here and, and the difference between that property and everything else that I own is is significant, right? Just being able to do it from the ground up from the fire separations to the sound yeah. separation to the separation of the utilities. It's a huge benefit to do purpose-built rentals. And if you can figure out a model that works financially, I think it's uh, it's one of the best investing strategies that I've ever done for sure. Yeah, and so like for, for these two properties, um, our build price is, uh, we are at basically a million dollars for two homes. So roughly about 500, five, 550 per house. Uh, that's your lot and build cost in. So all in 550 per house. And we, we just signed our tenants up for uh, basically 4,200 total. So 2,600 up and 1,600 down. So and their we, own utilities. Yeah, plus they pay their own utilities. So we're gonna be cash flowing over $1,500 a month per house. And, and is the value of that very similar to what you mentioned earlier around that 700 range when you're done? These would be 750 at least. Yeah, so, yeah. You've, so, so almost pulling all your equity out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And your cash flow is covering your your mortgage, and and you're good to go. Yeah, so that's the choice. The the tough choice we have to make is we can leave our money in there and collect three thousand dollars a month, or we take all our money out and collect a thousand dollars a month. So, you know, that's people ask why we're doing purpose built rentals and why we're building vice buyer turnkey. That right there is the uh, is the main reason. I think that's the definition of a first world problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Before we jump off, tell us a little bit about your community that you're doing. You mentioned the 44 units. I can't remember how many townhomes you said. Over the next five years, uh, I know you're raising capital for these transactions. Uh, sounds like an amazing thing. Give us a bit of an overview of what that looks like. Yeah, so it's uh, as well in our in the community of Souk where we live. Um, it's actually in a, a very well-established executive uh, subdivision that I lived in for 10 years called Sun River Estates. Um, the builders and developers there are uh, in their 80s and they've been that for 20 years and decide that they've had enough. So uh, they put the last phase up for sale, um, the bare land. So we purchased that bare land. Um, and we're gonna, and we're just gonna, under nine acres. Yeah, just under nine acres of land for 44 lots. It's all pre-approved by the city. Um, we just need our development permit, but uh, it's got its own zoning. So it's pretty, it's, it's Solid. Pretty, pretty easy to, get, to go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're building 44 homes. Uh, they're all going to be uh, have 180 degree ocean mountain views. So they're going to be gorgeous executive homes. Uh, the million dollar price range is going to be the sales price for these. Um, but yeah, so right now we're doing a raise for the first 23. We're going to do it in two phases, 23 lots and then 21. Uh, we're doing our first raise as we speak. We've secured the funds to purchase the land. Now we're on our second portion of that raise to basically pay for the servicing of it. Um, we closed on the lot next week, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we're just getting on the, the last little crossing our, our dotting our eyes, crossing our T's from the, with the lawyers, and then uh, we'll take possession next week. And my team's ready to go. They're uh, they're eager to get the machines on site to start uh, clearing the land. And and we've actually been dropping off uh, loads of dirt that we need for this next uh, to start off. <laughs> yeah, all the yeah the sellers allowed us to bring in the infill early, so uh, we. We secured some free infill, so we got 300 dump trucks of infill just got delivered for no cost. So we got insurance, got all the liability taken care yeah. of, and got the trucks in there, and uh, yeah. yeah. 
I just want to ask why you're dropping off infill when I know that when is, is it because you need it? Like normally you're taking it away as you're excavating. Why, why the dirt being delivered? Yeah, obviously there will be a lot of dirt leaving, um, but mm -hmm. this is the clean infill you need for around the service pipe. So it's, uh, yeah, the, the clean drainage rock and the, you know, ah. stuff for all the, all the, around the sewer pipes. I see. Okay. That makes more sense. So it's like, why are you bringing dirt to your property when you're just going to be taking it away when you get started? So yeah. that's amazing. I love the model guys. I think it's really unique. And obviously you've figured out um, a place in the marketplace where, you know, you, you, you can fill uh, a need for, to also as an, as investors, but also from a rental perspective too, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Congratulations on, on all your success over the last little while. And I'm excited to watch the journey as you guys move forward on this, on this project. Uh, any advice for people that want to get into uh, purpose-built rentals, working with prefabricated um, properties? Is there a lesson that you've learned along the way that is like this thing, if I knew this six months ago, it would have really changed things? Um, well, the first advice is just obviously you have to run the numbers in your in your area. What well, makes sense? Like, I don't know if the, the prefab purposeful rental would make sense in Vancouver, for example, right? Just the lot prices are too expensive. I mean, even here, a lot of prices are, are increasing. So it may not make sense a year from now. So you really have to run the numbers. Um, find a, you know, if you're not in the West Coast area where Winton Homes, you know, delivers at, at a, a reasonable price, find a company that's reputable. Like our the customer service we're getting from these guys is amazing. So yeah. um, I'd give a plug for them any day. Um, but just, you know, and ask the questions. Like I feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to discuss at any time. I've, uh, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people about the prefabs already. I'm happy to walk them through if they're in the area. Um, but biggest lesson, like nothing really big lesson learned, a lot of little guys, little ones just on, you know, how to prepare your site, how to be ready, be ready to have a lot of extra material on your site, you know, security and that kind of stuff, because you, all your doors and windows are showing up on day three and they're going to be there for a week. So you got to figure that side out. But, um, but no, I mean, the benefits far away, uh, those little nitpicky things and um, I'd go for it in a, in a second. Well, and I think um, our biggest lesson over the last three years, let's say, would be to take action, right? Um, you know, dreaming about it is one thing, but like, how do you get that into action and um, act now? Because if we had waited three years to reflect on the housing prices and how good the deals are here, we wouldn't have had anything to have in our pocket. So um, I think that's a big thing for my message. Yeah, great, great advice on on both fronts. Um, and you guys are a wealth of knowledge for people that are interested in getting into this space. So thanks for taking some time out of your day to, to walk us through this. If you guys enjoyed the session with Chris and Sari, please hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions for uh, both Chris and Sari and myself. You can also follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, or check out my website, website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, guys, thanks so much for taking some Thank time you. out of your day to join us. Uh, I really appreciate the insights that you guys both bring to this space. I wish you the best of success on your upcoming development. And I know that we're going to see each other in February uh, in Kelowna at our, at our Synergy Mastermind Meetup. So I'm excited for that to actually meet you in person. Uh, but until we get to the chance to do that, I wish you uh, all the success in the world. And I look forward to touching base with you guys very soon. Well, thanks, thanks Darren. Darren.